Hi, welcome to this corporate maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the algebraic notations practice questions. If you need any extra help on algebraic notations, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 19, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on algebraic notation. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. OK, question number one. Question number one says, circle the expression that means eight more than y. Now, if we want to find eight more than a number, we add eight to it. So we're looking for y plus eight. So here we've got y divided by eight. Well, that's not eight more than y. This is y take away eight, so that's eight less than y. This is eight y, that means eight times y. And this is y plus eight, which means eight more than y. So our answer is this one. So circle the expression that means eight more than y. It's y plus eight, adding eight to y. OK, let's look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says, circle the expression that is three times larger than x. Now, if we want to find three, something that is three times larger than a number, we multiply by three. So if you said to find the number that's three times larger than five, well, you do three times five is 15. So we want to multiply x by three. So remember in algebra, when we multiply a letter or a variable, a letter by a number, we just put the number in front of it. So seven w means seven times w. If we want to times x by three, that's three times x or three x. So we're looking for three x. So here we've got three x, that's three times x. So that would be three times larger than x. This is x plus three, that's three more than x. This is x cubed, which means x multiplied by itself and by itself again. And this is three plus x, which means x more than three. Now these two would give the same answer. If you do x plus three and three plus x, they both give the same answer. But that's not what we're asked here. We're asked to circle the expression that's three times larger than x. You want to multiply by three, so it's going to be three x. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says, circle the expression that means c divided by d. So that would be c divided by d. And in algebra, we tend not to write the division symbol. What we do is we do c over d. That means c divided by d. So here we've got d divided by c. Now we don't want d divided by c. We want c divided by d, so it's not this one. cd means c multiplied by d, so it's not that one. c divided by d, well, that's what we're looking for, so let's circle it. And c subtract d, well, that's not c divided by d. So our answer is this one. OK, let's look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, circle the expression that can be written as w squared. So to square something, you multiply by itself. So w squared means w times itself, w times w. So two times w, well, that's not w multiplied by itself. w times w, yes, that's w multiplied by itself. w divided by two, that's half of w, or w divided by two, that's not w times itself. And finally, w plus w, well, that would be two lots of w, or two w, not w squared. And remember, whenever we're squaring something, we're multiplying by itself, so that's w times w. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, match each expression to its definition. So we've got some expressions on the left-hand side and some definitions on the right-hand side, and one's been done for us. So we've got a squared, well, that's a multiplied by itself, and as you can see, a multiplied by a is a squared, so that one's been matched up. Okay, let's look at our next expression. We've got two take away a. Well, that means we're going to be doing a less than two. For instance, if we had 10 take away three, that's three less than 10, which is seven. So two subtract a is a less than two. So let's look for that one. So a less than two is the bottom one there. So let's match those up. So coming down here to the bottom one. Okay, next we've got then 2a, well that means 2 lots of a, so 2 times a, or 2 multiplied by a, so let's have a look at 2 times a, so let's look for that. a multiplied by 2, that's going to be a times 2, 2a. Next one, a plus 2, well that's going to be 2 more than a, so let's look for 2 more than a, that is the top one, 2 more than a, so this one's going to match up to the top one. Next we've got a over 2, or a divided by 2, so that's a divided by 2, which is this one. And then we've got a subtract two, that's gonna be two less than a. For instance, if a was 10, you'd have 10 take away two, which is eight. So a subtract two is two less than a. So let's look for two less than a. That is this one. So that will match up to the bottom one. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. So question number six, we've been asked to write down an algebraic expression for each of the following. So we've got four more than y. So if we wanted to find four more than a number, we add four to it. So for instance, if I wanted four more than 10, we would do 10 plus four, which is 14. So if we want to find four more than y, we're going to have y, and we're going to add four to it. So that'd be y plus four. If you wrote four plus y, you would still get the same answer, but if four more than a number, I tend to write it this way, where you have the number, and then you're doing four more than adding four. Um, with addition, it wouldn't actually matter which way around you write them, though I would tend to write it this way. If it is subtraction, you have to be careful, particularly if it's four less than y, it has to be y take away four, and so on. Okay, let's look at our next question, which is a subtraction. We've got write an algebraic expression for three less than p. 
So if p was 10, it's 3 less than p. So 3 less than 10 would be 7. And we would do 10, take away 3. So 3 less than p would be whatever p is, take away 3. If you want to find 3 less than a number, you take away 3 from it. So it's going to be p subtract 3. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number C. C says 3 multiplied by y, so we're multiplying 3 by y, so we're going to do 3 times y. Now, we're not going to write 3 multiplied by y like so, because we tend not to write the multiplication sign in algebra, we would just write 3y. So the answer is 3y, 3 multiplied by y. Okay, let's have a look at our next one, part D. Part D says to write an algebraic expression for 2 divided by a. So we've got 2, and then we're going to divide it by a. So the answer is 2 divided by a, and that's it. Because we're dividing 2 by a, the 2 goes on the top, and what we're dividing by goes on the bottom, the denominator. Okay, our next one, E. So part E says to write an algebraic expression for p multiplied by m. So remember, when we multiply things in algebra, we just put them together. So p times m would be pm. Now, we tend to write them in alphabetical order in a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, j, k, l, 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 j, k, l, m, n, o, p. So m comes before p in the alphabet. So maybe I should stick to maths. That would be mp, and we would write that down as mp. So whenever we're multiplying two letters in algebra, we just put them together, but try to write them in alphabetical order like so. Okay, part F. Part F, we've been asked to write down an algebraic expression for C divided by A. So we've got C, and we're going to divide it by A. So we're dividing C, so it goes on the numerator, and we're dividing by A, so A goes on the denominator, so C divided by A. And our next one, part G, our last part says to write down an algebraic expression for C taken away from M. So we're taking C away from M. So for instance, if C was 2 and M was 10, 2 taken away from 10 would be 8. So we would do 10 take away whatever it is. So when you want to find an algebraic expression for C taken away from M, we're going to solve with our M and we're going to take C away from it. So it would be M subtract C because that is C taken away from M. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 7. So question number seven, we've been given some algebraic expressions and we've been asked to explain their meaning. So we've been asked to explain the meaning of 4y. So 4y means four lots of y or four times y. So I'm going to write down four multiplied by y. Four multiplied by y. So 4y means four multiplied by y because we don't write the multiplication sign in algebra. We just put them together, 4y. Or four lots of y or four times y. Part B, part B we've got y squared. So we could just write down y squared, y squared. Or we could write down y multiplied by y because we're multiplying it by itself. So y squared means y multiplied by y. Either one of those would be fine. Our next one, part C, we've got 7 subtract s. So we could just write that down. We could write 7 subtract s. Or if you wanted to say it another way, you could say s less than 7 because it's s less than whatever 7 is. You can write it that way. I would tend to just write down 7 subtract s. That's what the expression means. Next one, part D, we've got xy. So that means x multiplied by y. And finally, part A, we've got B subtract A, so let's write down B subtract A. B subtract A. We could write A less than B. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says, we've got W is two less than Y. So whatever Y is, W is two less than it. So for instance, if Y was 10, W is two less than it, so W would be eight. So eight is two less than 10. So whatever Y is, W is two less than it. And we've been asked to circle the equation. So we've got some equations, let's read them and see what they are. So we've got W equals Y divided by two. Well, to find what W is, we're not dividing Y by two, so that's not gonna be our equation. Our next one, we've got W equals Y y take away 2. Well, if we take 2 away from y, we'll get w, because we're told that w is 2 less than y. So if we take 2 away from y, we'll get w. So that is our equation. Next, we've got w equals y plus 2. Well, w is 2 less than y. Well, if we add 2 to y, we're not going to get w, because w is actually less than y. So adding 2 to y is not going to give us w. And finally, w is equal to 2y. Well, w is not double whatever y is, so that's not going to be our answer either. So we've been asked to circle the equation that represents w is equal to 2 less than y. So here, if w is equal to 2 less than whatever y is. If y was 10, you'd have 10 take away 2, which is 8, and 8 is equal to 8. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 9. Okay, question number nine, we've been asked to match the expressions. So we've got some expressions on the left-hand side and some expressions on the right-hand side, and we've been asked to match them. So let's have a look at the one that's been done for us. 
2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by y. Well, if we were asked to work this out, well, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times y would be 10y, and that's matched up for us. So let's work out what these expressions are on the left-hand side and then see which ones they match up with. So if we had 2 times 5 plus y, now remember our order of operations. We've got to work out our brackets first of all, then any orders or indices. Some people call it orders or indices, depending on which way you call it, whatever you call it. I tend to call it orders. They're like your powers, like your squares or cubes or your square roots and so on. Then you've got divisions and multiplications, additions and subtractions. So whenever you've got a, a list of operations to work out, you do any brackets first, then you do any orders or indices there, you're like your powers or your square roots and so on. Then divisions and multiplications, and you just work in order of those from left to right. So if you've just got divisions and multiplications, you just work from left to right in those. It's not multiplications that come before divisions and so on. They have the same importance. And finally, we've got additions and subtractions. So then again, you just work from left to right. So let's have a look at this one here. We've got two times five plus y. So we're going to do our multiplication first. We do multiplications before additions. Two times five is 10. So we've got 10. And then we've got plus y. And 10 plus y is just 10 plus y. We can't do anything more with that. So let's find out where that is. That's the top one here. Okay, next we've got 2 plus 5 multiplied by y. So we have to do the multiplication before the addition. So we have to do this multiplication first. 5 times y is 5y. So we've got 2 plus 5y. So 2 plus 5y. So that's what this one is. And as you can see here, that's the same as the bottom one here. 5y plus 2. Just turning those around. So this one will be the one at the bottom. And finally, we've got 2 plus 5 plus y. When we've just got additions, we work from left to right. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So we've got 7 plus y. So it's 7 plus y. And as you can see here, 7 plus y is this one. So it's just that one there. And that's it. So we've matched up the expressions, the ones on the left to the ones on the right. OK, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, question number 10. Question number 10, we've been told that Lewis has been asked to write an algebraic expression that represents 5 less than the square root of x. And his answer is the square root of x minus 5. Explain his mistake. Well, he's been asked to write down an expression for 5 less than the square root of x. So I'm going to write this down. So 5 less than the square root of x. I'm going to start off with the square root of x. So the square root of x is the square root of x. And then we want to find out 5 less than that. So then we would then take away 5. We would do the square root of x and then take away 5. So for instance, if x was, and I'm just going to choose a square number, I'm going to choose 36. And if we were asked to work out 5 less than the square root of 36, well, the square root of 36 is 6. And then we would do 5 less than that. 6 take away 5 is 1. So if we had the square root of 36, that's 6 take away 5 is 1. So that's right. So if Lewis has been asked to write down an algebraic expression that represent 5 less than the square root of x, he should have done the square root of x x and then take away 5. He shouldn't have put the minus 5 under the square root sign because what this is saying is the square root of whatever 5 less than x is. So you would do the 5 less than x and then do the square root of it, which isn't what we've been asked to write an expression for. So explain his mistake. And that's it. So the answer is the subtract 5 should not be under the square root. It should be the square root of x and then subtract 5. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says, in a furniture shop, a table comes with six chairs. So if you buy a table, you get six chairs with it. And we've been asked which of the formulae below connects the number of tables and the number of chairs. So the number of tables T and the number of chairs C. And we've got four choices, formula one, formula two, formula three, or formula four. So let's have a look and see what the expression would be. So if we went into a furniture shop and we bought two tables, we would then have, well, because each table comes with six chairs, we would have 12 chairs because each table comes with six chairs. If we buy two of them, six times two is equal to 12. So the number of chairs is going to be six times larger than the number of tables. So if we multiply the number of tables bought by six, that's going to be the number of chairs. So let's look and see which one of these formulae shows that. It shows that if you multiply the number of tables by six, you get the number of chairs. And as you can see here, formula two, we've got the number of chairs is equal to six times the number of tables. So the number of chairs is equal to six multiplied by the number of tables. So if we bought, for instance, 10 tables, six times 10 is 60. So you'd have 60 chairs and so on. So which formula? That's formula two. C equals 60. Formula two, which is C equals 60. And that's it. OK, let's look at our last question, question number 12. OK, so question number 12, we've been given a list of descriptions and some algebraic expressions. So here are the descriptions. Multiply C by 2 and then add 1. Then we've got square C and then add 1. Then we've got add 1 to C and then multiply by 2. And finally, square C and then subtract from 1. So let's start off with the first one. We've got multiply C by 2, so that would be 2C and then add one, so that would be 2c plus one. So that one would just match up with that one. Next, square c, what's c squared, and then add one, so we're looking for c squared plus one, so it's gonna be that one. 
Now we've got add one to C, so we'd have C and we're going to add one to it. So we've got C and we're adding one to it. And then we're going to multiply by two. So we're going to multiply this by two. We could do two and then a bracket. And that means multiplying, we do C plus one, first of all, and then multiply by two. So we've got two bracket C plus one. So that would be this one here adding one to C and then multiplying by two. And then finally, we've got square C and then subtract from one. So we're going to square C, which is C squared, and then subtract from one. So we've got one subtract C squared. So that's going to be the bottom one there. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the Corporate Maths practice questions on algebraic notation. I really, really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on algebraic notation, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 19, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on algebraic notation. And again, I really hope you find this video useful. And if it has been useful, please like it and please subscribe. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.